Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam, and today we're taking a look at the Hisinji Stargazer FPV Drone Tech Toy. Here's the bottom line up front, because I don't like wasting your time. It's a super duper cool FPV tech toy, but if you really just want to get into the FPV hobby, this is not a good place to start, because it's locked down and you can't, it's not like open source and stuff. It's basically like a game kind of thing and it's all locked down and stuff but we're going to get into all that most importantly i want you to know that this is it's not that this is a bad product this is actually a really good product but it is a specific kind of product and i want to make sure that you know what you're getting and that you don't think that it's going to be something that it's not okay let's get into it full disclosure uh, Hi Sinji sent this to me and they reached out and they said, Hey Adam, uh, we see you do the blah, 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 blah. You want to try this thing? And I said, sure do. Cause guess what? I think that this would be perfect for my son. That's what I said to myself. I said, I think this would be perfect for my son. He's just getting into the FPV stuff. And this seems like a great way to get him into it as well. Um, and it turns out that it is. So there you go. There's your bottom line. We're going to get more into this. I got a whole pros and cons list that we're going to go through if I haven't already put it up on the screen. But first, I want to say thanks to our sponsor for today, PCB Way. PCB Way makes custom printed circuit boards. That's what PCB stands for. And they have thousands of components and different types of boards and circuit cir circuitry things to choose from. And they actually have a service where you can design your own board and then send that design to them. And then they'll actually create the board and populate the board with the components of your choosing on the board and they'll test it so that it's ready to go before it gets to your door which is pretty cool but uh, I'm not so much of a PCB guy but I love their rapid prototyping uh, service that they offer so if you like uh, the cool projects that I do like 3d printing and different stuff like that but you don't have a 3d printer and you're like man I wish I could make something somehow but I just don't know I don't have the machining and stuff you might want to check out PCB way because you can create uh, you know, the 3D model, create your file, and then send it to them, and then they can actually create it using a CNC machine, or sheet metal bending techniques, or injection molding, or 3D printing, or of course, whatever is appropriate for the product that you wanna make, and they have a lot of different materials to choose from. So if that sounds interesting to you, go check out PCB Way. I'll have a link down in the description below this video. I think you can get like $5 off your, your first time or something like that. Let's get the important stuff out of the way. How much does this thing cost? It's gonna set you back about $350. Looks like maybe 400 is kind of like their MSRP, but it looks like 350 right now on GetFPV. What comes in the box? This is what you get. You get your transmitter, you get your FPV goggles, and you get your FPV drone, as well as batteries. And, oh, you don't get that. You don't get the charging block, <laughs> which is what I put, wish they had put in there. Uh, but you get batteries, you actually get four batteries, and we're gonna go more in depth in all of these items. And you get a couple other like odds and ends and stuff. You get some uh, spare propellers, things like that. Pretty typical for an FPV drone, and this would be considered like a Cinewoop class. So in case you're not familiar with that, that basically just means a little micro drone that's primarily meant for indoor flying. So what, what makes it different? What actually is this? What's the whole deal with the Stargazer thing? Well, the deal is Hisinji has created um, a kind of an ecosystem that revolves around the app that they have that you have to download from their website onto your phone or tablet. And they've basically taken the, the FPV drone kind of process and sort of gamified it. So with the app, you're supposed to connect via Bluetooth uh, to the drone, and then it is able to basically upload its, its, its logs, its flight logs, sort of. So they have it so that you can see how many minutes you've been flying or how many crashes you have. And they have like a gazillion sort of like awards or like achievements that you can not really unlock, but like you get achievements and you get like points when you get achievements. So like, you'll be like, oh, hey, congratulations. You you flew around for a minute or like you crashed five times. Good job. And that's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. But anyway, that's, so that's the whole thing. That's kind of how that works. You have to have the app. You have to have, a smartphone or a tablet and here's the thing more importantly if you're buying this for your uh, child then that means your child has to have 
that or that's you know or they have to have access to that to a smartphone as part of playing with this whole thing so that's the part that i really don't like so that's in really any kind of products that where it like connects to an app and you like have to use your smartphone i'm just not a big fan of so it's it's not really anything personal against hisinji it's just that whole thing of like being on the phone and making the phone integrated with everything that we do i i don't like that because yes while flying fpv drones is you know very uh, uh technical it's very kind of computery oriented um you're looking through a screen and that sort of thing it's not the same it's not the same as like having to be on the phone and in particular the uh hisinji app is um it's very you know they want you to be on the app so they have like daily achievement things that you can unlock when you like check the app every day the more you fly the more like achievements you get and the more points you get and then you're able to unlock um like more performance features so you can like take those points and like apply them to like different areas of performance for the drone now eventually you just get to the point where there's nothing else to unlock or at least right now I, I assume that they're going to be continuing to develop the app and making uh you know more things that you can unlock and that sort of thing but i just the bottom line is i feel like it's unnecessary like it's it's kind of cool you know it's gamified it's gamification but like isn't isn't flying fpv like already fun isn't that kind of like a game? Because it's like you, the more you fly, the better you get, and the more like stuff you're able to do. So I don't know. To be honest, maybe I'm just old and jaded. Another important thing to know is that this drone, you can't just plug this into your computer and, and access Betaflight like you might be able to or like you would be able to with other like little beginner drones maybe something from emacs or beta fpv or whatever like a typical open source fpv drone um, you can't do that with this thing so you're you're stuck in their ecosystem and that's why i say it's it's not really something that you can fully grow with and kind of advance into the hobby so if you if you're looking for something where you just want to get into the hobby and you want like an entry-level kit don't get this. However, if you are giving this as a gift to somebody who isn't into FPV at all and they, they don't even know about it, but you're like trying to get them into it or, you know, or, or you just think that somebody would enjoy just kind of flying around, but they don't really like want to get into like the whole hobby thing or maybe this would, you know, spark something in that then it's it's cool it's fun one important note as you're taking it out of the box make sure you don't throw away the uh the 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 literature that it comes with the pieces of paper like these guys right here these cards that have this um qr code like this one for the uh the transmitter uh, because what you're supposed to do is scan your transmitter and your goggles and your drone and all that stuff um first thing like you basically the the whole what they expect you to do is like get the get the box and then get get the hisinji app and download it and then like set up an account and everything so then you can scan these items in there um because if if you don't scan your drone in there it won't uh log the uh flight data um and then and that's what happened to me so i didn't realize we were supposed to scan these but I couldn't even like access the settings until I had scanned the card for this guy. And uh, there is a QR code on here. Maybe that's the same, maybe that's the QR code for the drone, I'm not sure. Let's talk about flight performance. This thing, the, the normal mode for this is auto level with altitude hold or kind of altitude assist. It holds its altitude pretty well. So what that means is uh, you, you if you take your fingers off the sticks, it is going to stay at roughly the same height that like where you left it, um, but it will drift a little bit because it doesn't have position hold. Okay, so you need to have uh, stick inputs. You need to put 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 some. You know, basically, it's your job to control the thing still, um, but it should keep its height above the ground or above the the whatever surface it is over. So keep that in mind because it might hop up all of a sudden if you go over like a different surface. But it's it's not too bad really. So that's its typical uh, flight mode. 
it really is very docile, especially when you first take it out of the box. You're not going to be able to fly this outside with any kind of wind. Um, so it's pretty much indoor only. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to register like your drone with the Hisenji app by scanning the QR code. And then you need to log um, uh, like flight time and get achievements and unlock stuff so that way you can like put the points towards increasing the performance basically um, and then you can make it fly faster or I guess more agile kind of like the pitch and the roll and it's kind of separate and stuff like that so um, that's what you need to do if you if you really want to get it to where you can fly it outdoors um, but uh, but it flies very well it's really very smooth um, it, it is on the throttle stick it is centering so it's it's centered on both sticks and that's because of that uh, altitude hold um, but I find that the gimbals are actually very good and they're very smooth and it's it's very easy to to go up and down in the throttle without like hitting like a, that dead spot in the middle um, and really you know really feeling it I, I think it's they, they did a great job on that so it flies very well it's very easy for a beginner to fly uh, my son has had a little bit of FPV drone flying like on the simulator and stuff but not a whole lot and um, he really improved a lot like I don't think I have DVR uh, from all the different flights as he progressed and we'll talk about that in a second but uh, but he really got so much better and of course we crashed it a lot so let's talk about durability it's very durable it's very durable I, I do see now they like the the rear struts are like a little bit well they're they're snapped the rear struts are, but it's not really like structural exactly. Um, and I don't see that that's affecting anything. Um, we've, you know, lost a couple propellers, uh, maybe broken some propellers. I can see some areas where the propellers kind of uh, sliced into the frame uh, just because of things must have bent around and stuff. Um, but otherwise, I have not noticed any breakage. The, I have had times where the entire top portion of the frame will just come right off, and it's pretty easy to take off, I think, uh, as well as it'll rip off the FPV camera. So I had that just happen to me just today, actually. So you just pop it off, pop off the ca top canopy, and it, it tells you how to do all this in the manual and stuff. Um, and you'll see the FPV camera is actually the only thing attached to the uh, top uh uh, frame and then you have the bottom frame with the motors and everything else attached to that um, So that's kind of cool. And I think they they do sort of uh, Advertise like a modular design. They may have other parts out now I'm not totally sure to be honest with you because the the camera is set so far back and kind of because of how the the ducts or the propeller guards are kind of shaped I find that I a lot of times I'll think that I can clear an obstacle and then I end up hitting the propeller guard. And since it has kind of a sharp angle, it tends to catch it. And then like it spins me. And then the drone, um, it'll shut off when it detects a crash. And you can change that in the settings as well so that it won't shut off as easily. Uh, like if you just bump into something. Um, and I would say definitely if, if it's your first time flying this drone, leave it on the original setting so that it will shut off. Um, the only issue with that sometimes is if you are flying up a little bit higher and then it shuts off, you're actually more likely to damage your drone because it shut off and then fell on the ground. But uh, but we've had some good crashes with this and it really has um, still kept up very well. Uh, it does have brushless motors. I'm not sure what kind of brushless motors. It doesn't say the size or anything on there. Um, and the propellers are something like a two inch propeller. I don't think even a two inch propeller. They're very, very small. This is rather heavy for its weight, I mean, for its size. Um, I don't know, I don't know how heavy it is, but it is quite heavy, especially with this quite large battery and everything has like extra plastic to make it more durable and stuff. But even with that, it does fly very well and you're gonna get a, probably about three and a half minutes, uh, probably three minutes if you're flying it really hard, maybe four if, you, if you're really stretching it, uh, but you're going to get about three and a half minutes of flight time. And I, that kind of brings us to the batteries. I really like that they have four batteries. That's very, very 
just it it's like thank you thank you Hisinji for doing that because it's really dumb when they give you like one battery and then one spare battery and then then you just find it just doesn't last long enough and then they're like hey you can buy more batteries and you're like man I just bought this whole kit it's supposed to be like a whole kit and I'm ready to go and then so that's why there should be four batteries I'm glad about that however they don't provide a charging block uh, like a USB uh, block to plug into the wall. Um, so I, I had to get my own, and it does say in the manual that I found out later, um, you do want this to be able to do, uh, I think they said 5 volt at 3 amps, and that is what this can do. Um, so that's, you know, otherwise it's going to take forever for these to charge, or they may not charge properly. Um, and also, I really wish that they would have just provided a, a three-way USB-C uh, cable because then you could charge your drone and your goggles uh, your drone your transmitter and your goggles at the same time that'd be really cool but to be fair the transmitter and the goggles the ba the battery is much bigger and it lasts a lot longer and that is really nice that uh, that is included as well thank goodness these are 18650 batteries and those are lithium-ion batteries for the uh, goggles and the transmitter um, just talking about the transmitter again it feels really good, like feels really great in the hand. Um, the buttons are, are a little weird to get used to, but um, they're uh, they're okay. And and really great, great design. I really like the design. I like the color scheme. They did a good job there. Um, and the transmitter, uh, one of the buttons, does do uh, flip over after crash. So that if you crash and you are upside down, you can, uh, I believe you, pre it was a purple button, one of the buttons, you press it and then you press the start engine button and then it will, you know, put it in basically what we call turtle mode for us FPV pilots in beta flight and stuff. We call that turtle mode. And then you can, you know, move the stick and then it will reverse the propellers is really what it's doing. So that, that way it'll flip you back over. So that's a really cool uh, feature. You just got to remember that, like, if you are on carpet or something, you probably don't want to do that. Or um, if you're in a tight spot, you probably don't want to do that. And also... Uh, now I want to just take a moment to say, hey, if you do have this and you are a beginner, maybe you're a youngster out there getting into FPV with this. And I think that's great, but you got to be careful about um, where you, well, not just where you fly this, but you got to be careful about what's around your drone while you're flying because you don't want to fly like into somebody's face because you're flying backwards. So you always want to be able to see in the camera kind of like where you're going. And um, you got to be careful also, if you are going to do that flip over after crash, uh, make sure that people know that you are going to flip the drone over so that way nobody's trying to grab the drone to flip you over and then it goes wow because that can be kind of scary. Um, or it could get caught in somebody's hair. <laughs> ask me how I know. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know. I'm not going to tell you. Um, but it did get caught in somebody's hair. But it did shut off successfully, and that was great. And uh, and And not a not a bad situation overall let's talk about the goggles and the dvr so these are as far as i can tell basically just regular fpv analog box goggles um and again these are powered with an 18650 you plug them into USB C, which is super cool um and so it has this port on the side here and this is supposed to be for basically their proprietary uh, DVR module so that you can record your flights and oh, excuse me and it has a Wi-Fi component so that you can upload it to the app I think is what they're saying which again I have a problem with because it's like you know you're uploading it to the app which and and so you have to have a yep well first of all you have to buy another thing and then secondly uh it's Wi-Fi and then Wi-Fi, you know, just that's another thing that you have to connect and you got this, you know, radio signal blasting everywhere. And then, then you upload it to the app, but then it's like, where does it go from there? Like who's collecting the information? Um, and that is, that is kind of a concern for me. We'll talk about that in a moment. But so the DVR module is non-existent as you get it in the box. Um, the other thing that I noticed with this is when I would try to get my other regular analog FPV goggles on the same channel as this so that I could record DVR on that, you can get the image, but it is in black and white for some reason. 
and I did that on, on I have t uh, two different sets of goggles. One's a really old like Eosheen goggles two or something, and then the other one is a Fat Shark Scout. Um, and so I, both of them, I was getting a uh, uh, black and white feed. So pretty much all the DVR that you see in this uh, in this video here, that's why it's going to be in black and white and not look great. I noticed on the OSD in these goggles, it shows kind of like two different channel signals is what it looks like, or channel numbers. It feels like they did something to lock down the channels so that you can't just use any FPV goggles uh, with this, which I, I feel like, I just feel like that's kind of a bummer. Like that's kind of, uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. You know what I mean? Especially because, and it's because I'm coming from the FPV drone open source type stuff where everything is kind of supposed to be compatible with everything else. Of course, I mean, not DJI, of course, but you know, most people, it's like you, the FPV goggles can pick up any FPV signal for the, if they're analog, you know? So, I'm confused about that. Maybe maybe that's not what they did. Maybe they weren't jerks and locked it down or something. So, hi, Sinji, let me know in the comments or something like that. I'm assuming that, that that would be the case so that you buy another headset so that somebody else can watch you or that you can, um, or, or, so, or so somebody else can fly as well and you have to use their headsets. That's just, I'm assuming that that's what that is. So then the question is, if you uh, do get that, Wi-Fi DVR module and then you upload your video to the app where is it going on the app um, and a as of right now I I, uh, I wasn't able to find the privacy policy um, on the app and to be honest maybe it is on the website I have not looked but on the app itself it'll it'll even say like hey check out the privacy policy but it, it doesn't actually show you the privacy policy it like talks about the privacy policy and, and, and use of information and stuff like that, but it doesn't actually like show you what it is. So, you know, it's nothing personal, Hysenji. I am just skeptical of any kind of app that wants any kind of information because they're probably using my information and trying to make money off of me. And that's why the app is free and that's why they want you to be on the app and all this stuff. So I that's kind of a sore spot. I don't like that. And, and then also I'm not sure. And now I'm not familiar with, app development and how all that stuff works. So maybe there's a good reason for this, but it makes me wonder why isn't the app available on Google Play or uh, the, the Apple App Store? Why is it only on the Hisinji website? So that kind of, that seems kind of fishy, you know, where it's like you have to go to their website to get their app. Uh, of course, well, that's how it is with DJI if you're on an Android. So I don't know, just something, some, 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 something to think about, you know, maybe something to think about, uh, you know, depends on how, how sensitive you are about people using your data and stuff like that. I'll just go ahead and mention, I when I tried to do the update, uh, the OTA or over the air update for the drone, it took a really long time. It shouldn't have taken that long because I was using my tablet, it was on Wi-Fi. It said like it would take about four minutes. It took about 45 minutes. So super long time to update stuff. And then updating the app, I think, took a while also. So I don't know. Maybe my internet was just super slow. But that that's if, if that happened to you, leave a comment or something. And if you're wondering about what age is this for, you know, maybe you're getting it for your son or your daughter or something like that. Maybe for Christmas. Who knows what? Uh, I have an 11-year-old. Your job is to see if you can... Figure out how to make all this work and start flying FPV. But he is like a super genius, so I don't really, I, you know, I could, I could be biased there. I don't know, but I would say probably like 10, 11. I mean, it, it kind of depends on like how much you have them do. I mean, you could have somebody learn how to fly, uh, have a child learn how to fly pretty easily. But in terms of like getting it all out of the box and set up that I don't know that might be the hardest part to be honest with you um but anyway my 11 year old had no problems with it uh the first thing he did though is he opened the box and then the thing where it says watch this video he's like no Ta -da. So that's, that's gonna be the step test. one please watch this video no okay little monkey person journey starts here this is an ad but so that was the only thing there. He did have a little trouble reading the instructions and you do have to read the instructions a little bit and kind of think about what you're doing a little bit 
Um, but then he was able to get in the air pretty much without any help from me. So he did a good job. And uh, so I would say definitely, I don't know, 10 and 10 and up, you, you, you should be definitely fine flying with this thing. But, you know, it is also a big it's a temperament as well. That's the big thing is like, are they somebody who can work with technical stuff and like kind of think through problem solving and things like that? It's not bad. 15 minutes and you got in the air. And I think that's going to do it, everybody. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. If you ha still have questions or maybe I forgot something, maybe I left something out, leave me a comment down below this video and uh, I will try to get to you. And also, if you have this and uh, you'd like to share your thoughts about it or if you'd recommend it or not recommend it, please leave a comment down below. Thanks again to Hi Sinji for sending this to me. I am going to be keeping this one because this is actually my son's drone set up right now, which is pretty cool because... Uh, now he can just like fly this thing and then I can fly my thing. And so now we can like do it together instead of it. Because, you know, sometimes drones like you're flying and like it's kind of boring for the other people uh, because they're, you know, like you're really into it and you're like, whoa, this is so cool. It's like very, you're focused. But then the other people are like, ah, I don't know. There's just like this crazy thing making noise flying around everywhere. But in any case, um, yes. And thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video again. I think that's going to do it this time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day. Get out there and fly something. And I will see you again very soon.